It is time for the Rural Intelligence Report. Ruralintelligence.com is the place you can go to find out what's going on, what's been going on, and what's coming up in our area. And, of course, every week we check in with Mark Williams, and this week is no different. Mark, good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Marshall, and it's lovely to be back. And I'll tell you, there are so many really interesting things coming up this week throughout the entire region. I think we should have something for everybody, um, something inside, something outside, uh, and uh, really uh, fascinating. So, yeah, so we've got, yeah, let's get going. We've got right. a lot to talk about. Let us uh, talk about a couple of events that will end the year the first one in Great Barrington and the second one in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Yes. So both at educational establishments. And really, uh, we are so lucky in throughout our region and having some great educational establishments which have uh, free lectures which are open to the public. Um, and that's the case at Bard College on Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, January the 30th. Um, Bard College at Simon's Rock in Great Barrington. Um, because they have got uh, a reading and talk by the author Alexander Chi. He um, will be reading from his latest book and talking about it and trying to sell a few copies as well. Um, it's an essay collection called How to Write an Autobiographical Novel. Now, the reason I mention this, it was named a best book of 2018 by New York Magazine, The Washington Post, Publishers Weekly, NPR, um, and Time magazine and a, a number of others as well. Um, and listeners will, may, may well know of, of Alexander Chi uh, because he wrote, uh, he's written other novels in the past, including Edinburgh and Queen of the Night. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, lovely that he's coming to the area and talking. Um, it, it, this, as I say, it's a ra it's an essay book of essays. This one, um, and they're r right across the board. Everything from autobiographical pieces to um, other subjects as well. Um, and, and Chi, a lot of people will know him as well because he is a contributing editor at the New Republic um, and he's a professor at Dartmouth College as well. So um, that if you're interested in great literature and a great read, then uh, Bard College on Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, um, sorry, Bar uh, Simon's Rock, uh, Bard College, uh, in Great Barrington uh, at seven o'clock on on Wednesday, but then on Thursday, this is going to be really a very popular event. I think it's going to be people will travel a long way for this. Um, Williams College um, is hosting Tarana Burke. Um, uh, it, I think um, people will know her well anyway, but uh, I'll just remind people she's the founder of the hashtag Me Too movement. She's been a social act justice activists for a long time. But the Me Too movement, as we know, has been incredibly successful at uh, focusing on certain issues. And I think that uh, she is going to be a fascinating uh, subject. Now, what's going to happen is that she's going to be interviewed on the stage by one of the professors at Williams. And it will be, and I think that this talk will be incredibly uh, well attended from all around our region because she is such an important uh, person at the moment. So that's at Williams College on Thursday, January the 31st at 7.30 in the evening. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on to uh, February 1st, and uh, that is in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, the Radius Playlights Festival. Yes, um, this is uh, the this is the Berkshire Playwrights Lab, and we've talked about them in past years. Every January, oh, actually, it's February, isn't it? Every um, or right at the beginning of the year, should we say? Um, uh, every year, uh, they have these staged readings, um, and this year it will be six plays by six different writers. Um, and the mission of the Berkshire Playwrights Lab is basically to to provide playwrights with the space to create. Um, they really provide an opportunity um, for emerging as well as established playwrights to find a secure place where they can um, explore new avenues of creativity is what they say. Um, and the, and the, by the way, the process is incredibly professional as the plays in this, uh, this, the six plays that we that will coming up for this Friday, the first and Saturday, the second of February 
are um, what happens is the writers write them and then they go into a sort of intensive four day rehearsal process with professional actors and directors. Um, and, that, and that process uh, helps the playwright see their works, as it were, more clearly um, and allows them to take some of the works and go down particular alleyways. And if they don't like that alleyway, they can come back up and, and, and try it from a different angle as well. So it's really an opportunity for these playwrights to, uh, to experiment to, uh, with prof real professionals. Um, and then, by the way, by the time they finish this whole process, they have this fully block blocked script in hand, staged um, professional reading as well. And, um, and, and the not last thing is that after the reading, the audience is actually encouraged to stay on and uh, enjoy the talk back with the playwright. So the playwright also gets um, some real feedback from, from the, the eventual audience as well. So that's at St. James' Place um, on Friday, February the 1st and, um, and Saturday, February the 2nd. And as I say, there are a whole lot of uh, plays. So there's six plays in total by different right. So you have to go to their website you go to via rural intelligence and it's um it's under the 2019 radius playwrights festival also on february 1st the wines of oregon and washington state yeah i, I mentioned this um i uh, for several reasons first of all i love uh, wine tastings as, as you know from our previous conversations and knee james is organizing a wine tasting at ventford hall on friday evening at 5 30 um, and it's the wines of Oregon and Washington State. Um, so, uh, and there's a, obviously a lot of really wonderful wines from that area. But this particularly interesting is that um, the man who is actually going to be t arranging the tasting and, and talking about it is a, a guy called Jeff Brooks, and he's from the King Estate Winery. Now, what makes the King uh, Estate Winery particularly interesting that it's 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 over a thousand acres in size which means it's the largest biodynamic vineyard in North America. Um, and this is the way that a lot of vineyards are going. Um, and that, 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 so it's really an opportunity to see how the leading um, biodynamic vineyard operates and, and the wines that they have. Oh, and by the way, if you go early, there's a, a chance of a private tour of Ventford Hall as well, which is always interesting. So that's five, uh, Friday, February the 1st. Uh, at, in Lennox at Ventford Hall. We will move on uh, from Ventford Hall to Egremont, Massachusetts, and uh, on the first, uh, the Globe Terranium, Terranium class. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. That's uh, this. That, actually, this is also interesting because it's two uh, two fascinating things. First of all, I love terraniums because. They're so incredibly easy to keep, but they actually add a lot of color to a room, and so I'm a great fan of them. Um, and then secondly, there's a new um, wine store in South Egremont, and I think we, you know, it's always wonderful when a new business starts up, and we should try and do some supporting of it. And I happen to have been in a couple of times to check it out, and so uh, I uh, thought I'd mention this. So Friday, February the 1st, in South Egremont, at six o'clock in the evening at the South Egremont Spirit Shop, this new shop, um, the, you can have a wine tasting whilst um, enjoying, uh, whilst the experts from the florists uh, township four uh, teach particip participants how to create a glass um, terrarium, terrarium um, that can either hang up or you can sit on the shelf as well um, and uh, the lovely thing is that all the materials are included in this so you get your and and on top of that you get your own choice of plants and accents that you can put in your terrarium um, i i think the the terrariums are great fun because they are great gifts as well but i have mine at home in my offices and i think that it's so they're really a joy to watch um, and uh, also, whilst you're there, you get a chance to check out the new store and a, a wonderful selection. The, the owner is well known to the area, um, so uh, do check it out and give them some support whilst you're there. We'll head north, then we'll go to Lenox, Massachusetts on the 2nd for the Lenox Mountain Summit Hike. Yeah, this is, um, you know, it's 
good to get outside and get a bit of fresh air on these cold winter days. And if the weather's right, um, this is a great hike. So um, the, the, the Pleasant Valley Wildlife Sanctuary in Lennox um, is arranging this sort of what they're calling a moderately strenuous guided um, hike or snowshoe hike um, with an expert from Mass Alberton. And um, uh, th- this it's to the, it's, the walk is to the summit of Lennox Mountain. Um, the whole idea is to track wildlife, identify trees by their bark. And of course, the most important thing is you get, if it's a clear day, there is a 50 mile view from the top of the mountain. And it really is worthwhile uh, getting to the top of Lennox Mountain. Um, the organizers say that this is a moderately strenuous hike. Um, it follows the trail of ledges and um Overbrook Trail. It's about three miles in total. So if you need some fresh air, um, get out and enjoy yourself on Saturday, February the 2nd uh, at 12.30 in the afternoon, the Pleasant Valley Wildlife Sanctuary there. We will move on uh, and we will go to, let's see here, uh, why don't we stay in Lennox? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And by the way, this is going to be a really big event uh, for gardeners. Um, every uh, winter, the Berkshire Botanical Gardens has a winter lecture, um, and they bring in a really well-known gardener uh, from, uh, and uh, the place is packed out with. Um, and this year, uh, they're bringing in Arne Maynard to give their talk on um, in Lennox, uh, February the second, uh, Saturday afternoon it's at two o'clock in the afternoon and Arn Maynard is uh, interesting he um, he is a an international garden designer uh, he'll be talking about how he chooses and, and creates planting combinations for the gardens he designs um, he grew up by the way in, in the county of Dorset in England um, where he really was uh, I think he's put to work by his grandparents in their um, vegetable garden But um, he's also known now for not just his international garden design projects, which are all around the world, but he's also um, has his own garden in Wales where he owns this amazing medieval tower and he's building these uh, tremendous gardens surrounding this uh, beautiful medieval tower. Apparently, it's absolutely fascinating. Anyway, um, this is uh, this his lecture, I'm sure, will be incredibly well attended. You will need to. I mean, uh, it's really uh, very sensible to register in advance to get in because they're normally sold out. So it's at the Lennox Memorial Middle and High School in Lennox on Saturday, February the 2nd at two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and go to the uh, Berkshire Botanical Gardens website to register in advance. On February 2nd, an interesting event going on in Rhinebeck in the afternoon. Yeah, the Star Library in Rhinebeck is hosting Andrew Del Banco. He's a Columbia University professor. Um, He's going to be talking about his new book, which is called The War Before the War, Fugitive Slaves and the Struggle for America's Soul from the Revolution to the Civil War. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long title. But basically, his argument is that for decades after its founding, America was really two nations, uh, one slave and one free. And that slaves escaping from the south to the north and telling their stories became really the catalyst for the Civil War. Um, the book is uh, was one of the New York Times critics' best books of 2018, um, and it's really good that uh, the Star Library in Rhinebeck uh, is hosting that. So that's at four o'clock on Saturday, the second, the Star Library in Rhinebeck. We'll move on uh, from Rhinebeck, New York, uh, to Hudson, New York. Yeah, this sounds pretty wild and um, uh, pretty out there, but uh, this. It, We tried to have a little for everyone here. And at Basilica Hudson on February the 2nd, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they're having this um, second of two community-centered visual art, music, and sculpture programs. Um, And um, it sounds absolutely amazing. It's, It's produced in partnership with the Harpoon Productions, which is an artistic production company led by the installation and performance artist, J. Patrick Doyle. Anyway, the whole idea is that the embolic 
River Fire is a multidisciplinary installation that engages ancient folk traditions and rituals that aren't usually shown in a contemporary art context. And I can say that reading about this, uh, I would definitely agree with that. The story is inspired by uh, the Greek myth of Demeter and Persephone. Um, and the, uh, the, this embolic river fire is, as they describe it, an Elysian festival of fire and light. And it's all uh, told, the story is told through music, movement, puppetry, performance, and multidisciplinary installations that follow the metamorphosis of Demeter into various forms as she searches for her daughter, who's been abducted by Hades, god of the underworld. It sounds unbelievably wild and strange and great, great fun. And it's at the Basilica Hudson. It starts at four o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Um, and uh, go to the Basilica Hudson website for all of the details. But it does sound pretty wild one way and another. And and uh, they, they, they're saying that it's a way of welcoming in the arrival of spring. Well, I hope it does bring uh, the arrival of spring because <laughs> i have a funny feeling spring may be a few few months off yet so anyway it sounds like a wild afternoon there at basinic Arts. now coming up on february 2nd running through february 10th the warner theater in torrington a gentleman's guide to love and murder Yes, yes. This is going to be great fun. Um, Warner Theatre have really brought in this wonderful hit. It's uh, one of the most nominated shows of the 2014 season, actually. It had 10 Tony nominations. It won four uh, prizes there, Best Musical, Best Book, Direction and Costumes. It also earned seven Drama Desk Awards. Um including best musical it had four outer circle critic outer critic circle awards i mean uh, one drama league award uh, it was everything the story is absolutely great fun um, um, and we've seen it before in various ways the a distant heir to a family fortune sets out to speed up the line of, of succession by using a great deal of his charm and of course a dash of murder um, uh, so the, f the play is great fun. It's filled with lovely music, lots of laughs. And it's, by the way, um, the, the, there is an actor who gets the, one of the best, uh, pieces of, uh, one of the best roles, I guess, around because, um, there are eight doomed heirs to the family fortune have to, who have to be knocked off before, um, uh, this the the the, uh, the killer gets his family fortune, um, and uh, the amazing thing is that all eight of the doomed heirs are played by one particular actor, um, and of course they all end up um, uh, dying in lots of the most creative and and hilarious ways. So it's a great fun event, a uh, great fun play. It starts on February the 2nd, and it runs through February the 10th. So, again, you'll have to go to the Warner Theatre website to check on times and dates and also to book your tickets. North Adams, Massachusetts, the next stop, a TEDx presentation. Yes. Um, I've been to a number of TEDx's. Um, these are the local TED events, you know, the, the um, uh, TED Talks. Um, and uh, this, uh, they, they're they always incredibly well organized, incredibly well choreographed and absolutely fascinating. Um, and on Saturday, February the 2nd, um, up at Mass Mocha, they're having TEDx North Adams uh, 2019. Um, they are bringing in nine speakers, um, uh, some of whom I know and have heard of, um, for example, uh, Barbara Malchus. Um, is coming in and talking about inclusive communities. There's a water specialist, Hamza Faruka. Uh, there's the uh, Wham Theatre founder, Christian van der uh, Jin, Van Jinhoven. Um, there's the literary activist, Ty Allen Jackson. Uh, a number of others. It's going to be a really uh, fascinating event. I would, I can highly recommend. Uh, going up to uh, a TEDx event any, uh, anywhere. They are so wonderfully organized and absolutely fascinating. And that starts at 12 o'clock 
on uh, February Saturday, uh, this second, the February Saturday, uh, the second, and it will be, um, as I say, at Mass Mocha. Um, but you will have to uh, ch- uh, book in well in advance uh, to get your seating, etc. In Hillsdale, New York, on February second, a little bit of romantic piano. Well, yeah, and uh, this is lovely. This is a debut concert by a newly formed uh, quartet called the Palmer Quartet, um, and they're doing. Uh, they're going to go to the Rokeliff Janssen uh, Library um, and uh, perform some romantic piano quartets, as you say. Um, uh, there's the uh, there's quartets from Frank Bridge, Robert Schumann. Um, and the piano quartet in G minor by Gabrielle Fauré. Um, so uh, it starts at five o'clock in the afternoon in Hillsdale on f- uh, Saturday, February the second. We'll move from Hillsdale, New York, to Hyde Park. Yes, we talked about this in the past, uh, uh, and it's um, and uh, uh, and in fact, actually, I was at the CIA, CIA last week, and they were saying that this is one of the most popular um, events they have every year. So um, in Hyde Park at the Culinary Institute of America, at six o'clock, they are having their annual beefsteak banquet um, at the American Bounty um, restaurant there. Um, the story is absolutely fascinating. Apparently, beefsteak banquets originated in the 1800s in New York City. Um, they were uh, political events, uh, fundraisers for politicians. Uh, they were men-only events, um, and they were all-you-can-eat events uh, where you ate everything with your fingers. Well, <laughs> um, the CIA have continued this tradition. No, I'm joking. They are <laughs> they've upgraded this uh, event, and nowadays, obviously, it's open to everyone. It's uh, the whole idea. It is a rollicking evening where there are big communal tables. Everyone joins a communal table you so you're sitting with a whole group of new people and and, and um, you get to enjoy oysters and shrimp and mini burgers roast uh, roast sirloin steak oh cold beer from the brewery at the cia is there as well there's uh, they have a brass band which plays um beefsteak era music as well and there's a sing-along um so the it's a great great fun evening it will be really well attended you will need to get uh, tickets in advance um and by the way uh, they've gone from uh, everything being eaten with your fingers. They do actually offer utensils as well. So it, it, it uh, will be a great fun evening on February the 2nd at the CIA. Um, and that starts at 6 o'clock in the evening for the annual beefsteak banquet. Everybody knows things are better eaten with your hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on February 2nd, uh, Egremont, Massachusetts. And uh, this sounds like it's, it's going to be a lot of fun when the guitarist of the Spin Doctors comes to town. Yeah, Eric Schenkman uh, is coming to town. I tell you, the barn at Egremont Village Inn, we talked about a number of the events that they have, is really becoming a fixture on the scene. It, uh, it started, uh, I, I guess, about three or four years ago, or maybe not even that. Um, and they have so many events there, and it's a lovely atmosphere and a great space for um, for performing in as, as, as well as going to. Um, and they've got Eric Shankman. He's coming back. Um, he's been there before. Uh, he was the guitarist from the Spin Doctors, um, and he's coming with his own trio, um, and they're going to be playing music from Eric's uh, solo uh, album release, which is called Who Shot John? Um, he, he, obviously, you might know Eric before because he was um, this uh, key, really the key member of the Spin Doctors. He co-wrote all five of their top um, 100 hits as well. Um, so uh, if you get a chance, it's at the barn at Egremont Village Inn, um, on Saturday evening, February the 2nd at 8 o'clock, um, definitely uh, will be popular as well. And we'll wrap things up in Spencertown, New York. Yes. Well, um, this one I can personally recommend as well. Spencertown, you know, we talked about the Spencertown Academy of Art Center um, having its annual fundraiser um, last week. Well, um, they are... Um, there is an event there which is going to be great fun on Sunday afternoon. That's Sunday, February the 3rd. 
Um, they have a series which they call Conversations with Neighbors. Um, and it's, uh, uh, th this one is an afternoon with the artist Pops Peterson. Um, and he is absolutely fascinating. I know him. I've been to his talks at the Norman Rockwell Museum as well. Um, and Pops has, he's an artist whose rec his most recent body of work is rethinking the Norman Rockwell paintings um, and putting them through a sort of a modern day lens, both painted and photographed. Um, and he's taken a lot of, you know, these iconic Norman Rockwell paintings and really changed them and focused in on how we look at the world today. So Norman Rockwell looked at things uh, through his eyes in the 1950s and 60s, whatever. This is really takes us up to uh, very, very contemporary. And it's absolutely fascinating. Pops is a great talker. He um, is great fun. He makes the, everything really interesting and fun. And he makes the world, uh, you make, makes you look at the world in a new way, um, at, which is always great uh, when it comes to art. So that's at the Spencertown Academy Art Center at two o'clock on Sunday, February the 3rd. And I definitely would recommend uh, popping into that as well. And that wraps up this week's look around at Rural Intelligence. Just a, a bit of the information you'll find at ruralintelligence.com. Mark, we'll speak to you again next week. Lovely. Thank you so much. I look forward to it.